What's up? Welcome to the video. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're doing swell wherever you are in the world. I'm sick right now, of course. Again, surprise, surprise, it's my kids' fault. It's because they don't listen. I, well, they, what probably happened is I told them to wash their hands. They didn't wash their hands, and then now I'm sick. So that's how that works. That's what I mean. <laughs> in this one, we're doing the double exposure effect, where you clip two photos together to get kind of a cool composition. In this example, we're going to use this model here, and this picture of Japan, somewhere in Japan, I believe, right here. Now, if your screen doesn't look like mine, I'm using the Affinity Photo Beta version, which means the testing version, uh, which is going to come up soon, a new release. But if your screen doesn't look like mine and you want it to look as similar as possible, you're going to go up to Window, Studio, and select Reset Studio. Now, there's some additional tools here Affinity is coming out with soon, this Object Selection and the Subject Selection. I'm not going to use them because it's not live yet. But just know doing your selections uh, will be a lot easier very soon. Even though it's awesome, it's going to get better. So the first thing we need to do is isolate this model right here. Now to do that, I'm going to use the selection brush tool, which is in your tools right here. You can hit W on your keyboard. And when I do that, my mouse is going to change to this circle. And I'm just going to start painting over top of this model. Now this selection is pretty easy because the background is pretty clean. Good contrast between the model and the background. And I'm not worried about her earrings so much. So this looks like a good selection to me. So from here, I'm going to go click in the refine button at the top. And when I do that, it's going to give me options to sort of refine it, but I think it's a clean selection. So all I'm going to do is go to my output box at the bottom and select new layer and click on that. So this model is isolated from the background on the own layer. Now, the reason you're seeing the background still is because the old picture is down below here. I'm going to, if I turn that off, you'll see the background's gone. I'm just going to delete this photo. And now we have the model, which has been isolated from the background. Cool. Now, what we want to do is take this city picture and clip it inside. So to do that, we are just going to clip, click on <laughs> click on the city picture and click, hold, and drag it and drop it right on top of the model. And when you see now in the layers panel, we have, let me rename this model so you can see it. We've got the model on top and then to the right a little bit is the city because it's clipped inside. If I turn the city picture off here, <clears throat> you will see the model is still there. It's just kind of covering over top. So... To make this cool, because we want to make it cooler, we're going to paint away part of the city pictures to expose some of this model's face. Now, to do that, we're going to use masking. Now, if you don't know about masking, I got the world's greatest video on masking. Link it down below. All the kids are talking about it in the chat group, group chat stuff. Um, so let's apply a mask to the city picture. So I've got the city selected. I'm going to go down to my mask button right here. And now a mask has been applied. You can see this little mask is attached to this city. Now, the way masking works is you can use your paintbrush to paint things away or bring them back in. Now, what I'm going to do is go to my brushes and I'm going to grab one of my shady details brushes here. Quick self plug, go to bydesignmethod.com if you want awesome brushes for Affinity Photo and Affinity Designer. Whatever brush you use, um, whether it was a whatever, a, a, a pastel brush or a shader brush or whatever any kind of brush that's the effect it's going to paint away i like the shader brushes because these are kind of like grainy brushes and i'm going to pick uh maybe my second shader brush i'm going to hit b on my keyboard and you can see now already my brush is a little bit big i'm going to make it a bit smaller now if i paint in black if i go to my color tab in the top right i'm painting in black that means i'm painting away the mask which means i'm hiding some of this photo so let's paint away here slowly some of this city to expose the model space and you can see it looks kind of grainy because this is the this is the brushes i created for um, well, for anything really, but I'm going to use it in this example. So as I'm painting, you can see the model space is coming back in, but still blending in with the background. So you can just paint as much as you like. I'm going to do something like, so you can see your eyes maybe here like this, but you can see the city as well. So that looks pretty cool. That's right there is the double exposure effect. Now I'm going to try a couple different things here. We'll see if they work. <clears throat> Excuse me. Kids got me sick. Again, blame them. Comment down below. It's your kid's fault. And I'll comment back, how dare you? Uh, <laughs> um, okay, so back to the layers panel. <clears throat> so here's a couple things I'm going to try just to see. We could put a, another background on this. We could mess with the original background. What I'm going to do first is duplicate this city picture. So I'm going to right-click my mouse and click duplicate, wherever it is right there. Now there's two of them, but they're clipped inside still. So what I want to do is take this one of these city pictures. I'm going to click, drag it, and then put it down below. And I'm going to go to the left a little bit. You can see if I go to the right, it's going to clip in. I don't want that. If you look at the layers panel now, if you look, if I go to the left a bit, <clears throat> it goes to the background. 
Now it's a background, but we have this white stuff here because the mask is still applied to it. So on the picture on the bottom, let's click on the mask and let's delete it. So now we have this background. So she's sort of blended in with the background and with the um, picture itself. So this is just a, an idea. You, would, you don't have to do this. If we did a different background, for example, let's turn the city off and let's go up to layer, new fill layer. And our fill layers appeared at the top of the layers panel, which is blocking everything. So let's click and drag it all the way to the bottom. Now we have this dark background. And what we could do is blend this in with another photo if we wanted. So <clears throat> let's go to our stock panel to the right here. I'm going to click on that. And I'm just going to search for map because let's just, I don't know. That's what I feel like. So let's just go and try to find some sort of map that we can blend in here. I guess anything will work. Uh, let's use this. I'm going to click on this map here. Click, just drag it and drop it on top. And it's going to cover our whole canvas. So I'm just zooming out so I can make it smaller because it's gigantic. <clears throat> let's shrink it down. Cool. Now it's at the very top of the layers panel. You'll see this map. I'm going to call it map so we know what it is. I'm just going to click. I'm going to drag it right on top of the fill. So it's still covered, but you can see the model. Now I want the map and the fill to match each other. So what I'm going to do is click on the map layer. I'm going to go up to my blend modes, which are right here. And right now it's set to normal. And what I want is these two pictures to interact. So I'm going to click from normal. I'm just going to go through these to see which one I like. Uh, multiply is pretty good. Uh, let's see. I think I'm going to go with overlay for this one. Let's say. So let's make this like that. And that looks pretty cool. We can do a couple other things. Let's add some text first of all. Let's call this um, believe. Believe? Believe, sure. Let's make the text white. And put this at the top. And to make this a little bit more mysterious, let's highlight the word lie and do that. Something like that. Let's be a little bit more mysterious. <clears throat> now, again, if I turn this off and turn this picture back on, it would look like that. Let's change these colors here. Let's grab one of these oranges. And let's grab one of these darker ones here like that. <clears throat> okay, so this looks all right. looks pretty cool. Let's turn the map back on. And another effect I want to do on this text because it just kind of looks bright and very vibrant. Let's um, green it up a little bit. We're going to do the same effect. I'm going to click on the text at the very top. I'm going to apply a mask again down here at the bottom. Now my mask has been applied. You can see it's clipped in there. <clears throat> with my mask selected, <clears throat> oh gosh, video's ruined. Uh, with, with my mask selected, I'm going to click on B for my paintbrush again. And my same brush is still selected. So actually, let's go back to my brushes and let's grab a different one. Let's grab, let's grab shader three. Sure. And I'm just going to start slowly painting and you'll see it'll start sort of graining up and painting away part of this text just to make it look a little bit rougher, maybe like that. I don't know how I feel about that, but <laughs> it's good. Uh, next, let's go and grab a PNG file. I'll do that really quickly in the background, a PNG file of just movie credits to throw on the bottom to see what that looks like. Okay, cool. Now we have some movie credits on the bottom just to make this look a little bit more, um, I don't know, realistic. And if we go back to our layers panel, we can turn off the map and we could just use a dark background if you like. You can do the city again. And let's do one more thing on this model. Let's click on her. Let's go down to our effects layers. And let's add an outer glow to her. This may look good. It may not. So let's just try and put a bit of a glow. And just to show you what it looked like on each background. So we have the plain dark background with the double exposure. We have the city background, which is also clipped inside of her with the double exposure. And we have the map background with the double exposure. And you could also, again, if you didn't like this effect, just let's turn off the outer glow and go through those again. So we got the map background, we got the city background, and we have the plain background. So uh, if you're looking for great brushes, check out buydesignmethod.com. I got amazing brushes for Affinity Photo and Affinity Designer, which will be super easy to use and bring your uh, design up to the next level. Hope you found this helpful. Uh, if you did, like, comment, subscribe, do all those things that all those YouTubers tell you to do because I'm a YouTuber. Uh, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.